So I was looking at the recent deck list, um, and I wanted to see what Burn looked like with uh, Lyris being banned. Um, turns out it doesn't change that much. I really like the new, uh, this new uh, Kumano faces. I'm not even going to try and say the rest of it. Um, this is really sweet. Um, I really like this card. It's honestly really good. Oh, excuse me. Deals a damage to each player and each Planeswalker when it comes into play. Then all your creatures come in with a 1-1 counter. You're talking about having a 3-3 Eidolon. That seems really sweet. Um, and then it's a 2-2 two -two that basically just gives everything Magma Spray abilities. It just makes everything get exiled, so it's awesome. So I'm a pretty big fan. We are running the 20th land now. I don't exactly know how I feel about that. Um, I think part of the reason for that is because the Bone Crusher Giant's in the deck and there's less lot of the stages, so you need to ensure that you're hitting your land drops more consistently. Um, also, this list has gone away from the Den of the Bugbear package, and we're now in the Rammy Nap Ruins package, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, Rammy Nap Ruins presents less damage, but is harder to deal with. And we're now playing the new Red Legendary Land, um, which makes a couple of 1-1s one that can get in there. So I, I think it's pretty sweet. It's pretty solid. Um, the thing we're also playing is two Skull Cracks. That's a spicy meatball. Um, I really like it, but I don't know how it'll play. It depends on what matchups we draw, I think. Sideboard's still pretty stock. It feels like four Chain to the Rocks, four Ruling Vortex, three Searing Blood. That's been pretty stock for a while. And we're playing four Curse of Shaken Faith. Um, I really like that also. I think it's a necessary evil for when you're playing against like the Hidden Strings deck um, and the Idol or the, the Phoenix deck. I think those are necessary cards to have in that matchup. So I'm pretty excited to, uh, to jump in and see what we can get going here. I was playing some Popper last night. Popper League, or Pioneer League, I mean. Yeah, I was playing Popper Burn last night. I've been trying to test uh, test Popper since I'm going to be playing at the team tournament um, this coming weekend. So I'm uh, feeling pretty good about my deck choice. Um, the only thing, the only matchup that I really question is the, um, the red-black um, burn matchup, which is a pretty weird matchup, but they play a lot of life gain. So even though their land base is not as good as mine and a little awkward at times, um, it's, uh, I think it's okay. So, I think we're gonna keep this and put an idol on back. I'd rather have the third land, I think, to guarantee that we can play the Bone Crusher Giants. So, yeah, like, our line there, in my opinion, was either to put, um, was to put the idol on back. Um, or to put a Bone Crusher Giant back, and I think Bone Crusher Giant has more upside. So, all right, we're gonna run out of Swiss Spear. Um, we're gonna attempt to stomp them after we attack here. That'll probably be met with a Sensor or a Fateful Absence, maybe. Um, that's fine. We'll go ahead and put our opponent to 14 here and say go. Now, our opponent probably has an absorb. Probably has an absorb here. Um, the way they're sitting here thinking, I'm wondering if they missed a land drop, maybe? Probably not a super high likelihood, but a possibility nonetheless. Um... Mm, so no absorb. Now that feels pretty good. So we're going to attack for one here. And then I'm going to run out the Eidolon. Alright, they cycle in response. You like to see that. All right, well, it's possible that they just have an untapped white source rolled up here to be able to play Supreme Verdict and take nothing off of off of Eidolon here, which would be pretty bad for us. Um, but anything other than an untapped white source here, and we're just kind of getting to steal one. Ooh, that feels good. That does indeed feel good. Attack for three. So 
So they start to do something here. I'm wondering what they have. Maybe it's Cycle of Shark. Nine, seven, then they take three and go to four. All right, well, let's go ahead and do this. We're taking a turn, we're taking a, uh, taking an aggressive line here to try and put our opponent pretty low. And then we have three Bone Crusher Giants left in our back pocket here, so. Feels like an awkward draw for our opponent has left us with a pretty good start to the game here. Okay. You know, the funny parts, we've done all, we're, our opponent's at four and we haven't seen a single burn spell. We're going to attack them. All right, let's go ahead and run out of Bone Crusher Giant here because us having Bone Crusher Giant on the field does just, uh, it's a lethal attack here. We're having sticky threats that we're forcing our opponent to deal with. If they have an instant or sorcery here, they actually have to take two off of it, which makes our skull crack in lethal range. So we're kind of in a pretty good spot here. We've worked the game in a decent spot for us. Oh, they tucked it away. They go for the absorb here. I ooh, they don't. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so our opponent goes to three here. So I'm actually not going to tap out. I'm just going to hold up Skullcrack. And if they go for the Field of Ruin here, then we'll just blow them out. Because I'm... Yeah, I, I feel like they're probably holding an Absorb here. And they had Absorb up with the way their mana was sitting, so... Man, that is a whole lot of Castle Ardenvilles. Okay. Okay. So we just needed our burn spell here to win the game. Cast Boros Charm. They're going to Dovin's Veto this, and we're going to Skull Crack them in response. All right. Well, that felt pretty good. That was a uh, pretty good first game to start off with there. So Rolling Vortex is going to be uh, amazing. Um, I'm wondering how that card plays into this matchup, if you want the truth. Um, Play with Fire feels like our worst spell. So we're probably just cutting Play With Fire. I like Play With Fire because it scries, but it is really bad into the... Um, I feel like this is a mulligan, just looking at it. I like this hand a lot better. I think we are going to put the land on bottom this time. 
one second here. All right. Play Swiss Spear, get in for one here. Um, next turn, depending on what they do, like they're probably just gonna hold up mana here. Interesting. We'll go ahead and run out the Eidolon here. Jeez. Jeez. Um... Yeah, we're probably just better off doing this. Now, this unfortunately might be one of those weird games where if they get into the right spot, they can race us. Um, Skycliff Cleric, Cleric, what does it say? You gain what? You gain two life? Man. This has been a lot of life gain. A lot of life gain. Jeez. I think I'm just gonna scoop it up here. Like, honestly, this is not going well. Like, and not hitting lands. Like, we had the spells, but playing one spell each turn is not gonna get us there. I think we're just running it back. I think we like the way our deck's set up. I just think we need to draw, like, we just need to, like, hit lands on curve. Um, we got a mulligan this. You know, this is the most I've ever mulliganed for a deck that has 20 lands. And I think with a lot up to stage, we're okay with putting a land back. And if nothing else, I can play the Kumano and a lot up to stage next turn. Just so I was like, just kind of depends. Okay, phone. This fateful absence? Still away. Alright. So our opponent goes to 18. We play a lot at the stage. We take a chance on hitting a land to play the Vortex. I think it's probably worth here. It's a little bit of a risky chance there, but we did hit back-to-back -back lands, um, so that feels pretty good. So, uh, hitting the lands will allow us to play uh, Kumano, um, hold up Bone the Stomp from Bone Crusher Giant, and hold up a Rolling Vortex activation. So, that feels pretty solid. They'll probably have to read this one, or not. Maybe they know what it does. And we'll say go here. Hmm. Well, that's not great. We kind of needed that ruling vortex to, to stick around. Huh. 
I'm just going to say go here. I don't really want to run my Soul Scar Mage into a... Um, into a Supreme Verdict, so that we just kind of get double swept up here. like to try and avoid that if I can. Let's see what we can do here. Attack for seven. Play skewer. We'll hold the other skewer and say go here. No reason to like really run ourselves out of resources um, this early. They're probably just gonna run out of Supreme Verdict here if I had to guess. Yeah, that seems good. So like, I'm curious to know if you think that shocking in, if you think shocking in's worth a veto, if you knew I was gonna rip that off the top, then you probably would think yes. All right, they still got four cards in hand, so it's not like we're out of the woods or anything, but drawing to Rolling Vortex does help. It's good pressure and life game prevention, so. Alright, well, that's a two-for-one on cards, so I'll take that. Hopefully their last few cards are just terrible. Well, they're casting a consider in their main phase, so I mean... I left it on top, that's not very promising. Jeez. So you had the other March of the Other Worldly Light into consider for the skyclave cleric and you're probably holding consider back up or you're probably holding absorb back up well let's negate their last two damage and say go kind of wish we hadn't drawn a six land there is this a hmm that's terrible yeah that's really bad them time walking us there is really bad for us We'll just say go here. Some part of me believes that they probably have a land in their hand. Jeez. Our opponents had it rolled up this game. I mean, I guess if we're going to draw a land, even though that kind of sucks. Um, you never know what your next turn's going to hold, so... Mm, actually, I'm just going to hang on to the land. I see no point in sacrificing the land now. I think we need to try and go for this now. We need to be able to put something into play. I feel like they don't have an absorb. If they did, they would have just played it, and or maybe they just have the answer for it, and they're just they're thinking that going to seven's worth it. I kind of feel like if they if they had the answer, they would have played it right there. Like if they had a counter spell, they would have played it. Now they could cycle a giant shark here. Now, I mean, this sucks, hind tit. Like, there's just nothing we can do about this. It's not even like we can, like, follow up after combat and kill it or anything. I mean, in 18 cards, we've seen 8 lands. 10 spells versus 8 lands is not great. 
All right, I'm going to concede. There's no coming back from this, and if there is, I don't know what my series of draws looks like um, to get back into that game. We had two rolling vortexes, and our opponent dealt with both of them. So, I mean, our opponent had good draws. Like, was a uh, was definitely an interesting match. I would feel like the way our deck is set up that we would be highly favored in that match, honestly. But apparently not. Hey, what's going on, Adoxy? Um, so, I mean, the biggest change is that Lyris was banned. Um, so, it's pretty interesting. They well, The person who was playing this has went, has went away from the... Uh, has went away from the uh, wizard package, which I'm a big fan of. I really like stepping away from that um, for the changes that they've made here. I think it's a, uh, I think it's definitely a upgrade compared to what the, uh, um, what the wizard package was. I felt like the wizard package was kind of a trap. So. Well, we get to be on the play again. So that's promising, at least. Like, again, we just can't keep this hand. I, I So this is my fourth game so far, because I played all three games, and now we're playing this one. And I've had one land in all of my opening sevens, which is very odd. I don't feel like that's a very high likelihood of that. I'm going to ditch the Skullcrack here. Uh, that card has the highest percentage of being the worst card so we'll just uh we'll just take that i like the lurus ban so far hit it has opened the list yeah it's opened the list up a lot and honestly i'm with you i've really enjoyed the uh the lurus the lurus ban as well i think that was a i think that was a really good call um part of me wonders if maybe we wouldn't have been better off having a format where Lyris as a companion was banned in Pioneer Modern and able to be played in your deck. So that's something I, I wonder about, if I'm being wholeheartedly honest. All right, well, let's see if you got it, opponent. You're going to 11 either way. I was like, whether it's the Censor or whether it's the Fateful Absence or the March of the Otherworldly Light there. All right. Ooh, got rid of the Saga. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm with you there. I think the problem is the companion mechanic, not Luris itself. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think Luris, like, <clears throat> like on rate, is a very fair card. Um, like, everything that it's trying to do is very fair, in my opinion. Um, but, the, but the idea that... Um, but, yeah, the, the, mecha the, the companion mechanic is what makes Luris broken. So, yeah, I 100% I agree. Just don't find a portable hole, please. Oh, you had the portable hole. It just didn't matter. That's cool. Jeez. I mean, like, not being able to play the lot at the stage there was pretty backbreaking. They're just going to run out the Teferi here into a clear board. Like, we're playing 20 lands, and we're getting stuck on lands more. Fair Orzhov card? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So at least if their option is another sensor, they're forced to... It's not as a veto. They've got it rolled up. Well, this is back-to-back -back matches we played against Blue-White Control, where they've had it just rolled up, like... We did not, we could not do anything about it. Hmm. Talk about efficient use of your mana. Untap a couple of lands. I 
I mean, we'll play on. Like, uh, we'll put that on the bottom. We definitely don't want another land. I think we have a highest chance of resolving this here. Hopefully they don't have a sensor. It's like if they do, that's just bad beats. But, I mean, that was definitely the highest chance of us, like, peeling out to something. Scry 2. Scry's two cards to the bottom. That feels pretty good. The fact that they went bottom-bottom does feel pretty sweet. Oh, I wish it would have been an instant, but we're going to play it anyway because I don't feel like we have a choice. Oh my gosh. Wow. I cannot believe we won that game. I cannot believe we won that game. We should not have. Our opponent had it rolled up and they just drew garbage. So I'm going to take that as a, as a sign of Moto... Um, Saying, saying thanks, or saying here you go after what happened last game. So, we're going to board the same way we did. Bring, take out Play With Fires. It's our worst burn spell. Bring in Whirling Vortexes. So far, I have found a very hard blue-white meta. Is that so far for you too? I have an Orzhov Blink deck. Uh, Blink Brew that is now working in this meta. Yeah, so I mean, people are playing blue-white control hard right now. Like, after the after the ban, like... After the, the Lurus ban, like... I think the, the go-to deck is blue-white control. Um, Dovin's Veto and Narset beat up on a lot of things. It beats up on Phoenix, it beats up on uh, Jeskai Ascendancy, and it beats up on um, Hidden Strings. So I think that's the go-to deck right now, and honestly, I think it will be for a while. Um, I'm curious to see what that Orzhov Blink deck that you're playing, that like that like like you're having success with is. I would be interested in seeing that list. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this Wispier because there is a high chance that my next turn is going to look like me playing Eidolon. Like, even if they have the sensor, I don't really feel like I'm playing around it. I could try to go for the whole lot up the stage, play... If I had a Boros Charm in my hand, I would probably go for the play of play Soul Scar, play, uh, play, is it Kamina? Kumano. I would probably play that, um, because then I'd be able to protect the Supreme Verdict turn, so. Time for aggro? Or, f oh, for sure. Can I post a link? Yeah, it should let you post a link. Um, and yeah, I mean, now that everybody's playing blue-white control, maybe, maybe now's the time to just play, like, all-in aggro. Now that's interesting. So, we'll play Soul Scar Mage. We'll play... Kumano, let it hit for one, and then we'll play Loud Up the Stage to set up for a pretty aggressive next turn. So that feels pretty good. I mean, another Kumano feels pretty sweet. Plus, we have the opportunity of playing a 3 3 Idol on this turn, which I am a big fan of. Um, so we'll go ahead and run this one out. See what our opponent does. They're going to let it resolve. We're going to attack for two. We're going to go to 15. And then we're going to play Eidolon. Now, if they let this resolve, then they definitely just have a Supreme Verdict that they're looking to clean up with. Absorb is also a good option. We will put these on the stack. Alright, run out Vortex. If they have a counter, this will get met with it. It always does. Hmm, alright, so it appears that they're looking to do something else. There it is. Okay, yeah, after this game, I'll look at that link and see what, see what we're working with. Uh, 
I'm actually just going to say go here. I'm more interested in holding up a vortex activation. That's interesting. Not finished for sure. So much work to do. Let's see here. Two Brutal Cathar, three Charming Prince, four Spellbinder, two Freebooter, three Skyclave, Sun Gold Sentinel, three of those, four Thraven Inspectors, four Wasteland Strangler. Now that's spicy. Uh, three Dire Tactics, two Fatal Push, two Last Cacket, two Portable Hole, three Teleportation Circle, 23 lands. That is really spicy. Like, I'm not going to lie. I, that looks pretty sweet. Um, that actually looks pretty awesome. I think it's safe to go ahead and cast um, the Bone Crusher Giant because I want to have the Stomp off to the side. It's not a high chance they'll play something with life gain here. So, but yeah, I'm not going to lie. That looks really cool, man. Um, playing Wasteland Strangler with a Lee Spellbinder is really neat and not something I thought about. So, that that's pretty cool. I kind of forgot Wasteland Strangler was a card. Um, them having Farewell there was kind of a blowout because they got to eat the Vortex and everything. I would have rather have them gotten multiple creatures with it, but... <sighs> the shark time? It always is. They always have that, like when shark's just going to be a 5-5. Five -five. We'll run out Soulscar Mage and say go. I think I'd rather have like an, a burn effect to kill the shark token there and like force everybody to play on. Thanks, mate. That's very kind. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Absolutely. I know we won the first game somehow by an act of God, but I don't think we're going to win this one. Hmm. Veto sucks. Yeah, that is so cool to have a two for one. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, Wasteland Stringer is really cool. Like, I one time playing Modern when Black White Eldrazi Taxes was a thing, I suspended a Rift Bolt, and I had somebody play a Wasteland Strangler and kill my Goblin Guide with my Rift Bolt. It was a blowout. I didn't even realize that was a thing, but it was insane. Well, that's interesting. Leyline of Sanctity. That's a, that's a spicy meatball. Maybe that's something a lot of people are playing now. I mean, they can openly just castle Vantress here because they know that... Hmm, okay, they want to make a token instead. I mean, they could have just openly castle Vantress there because, like, they know that we can't um, do anything. All right, we're drawing all the burn spells that we wish we would have had earlier. We're not going to win the game with a single creature. We just won't get there. All right, so this time we're playing around Farewell. But even with the Leyline of Sanctity, I think that we can... I think that we can make this happen. I think there's enough good cards in our list, even if they open Leyline of Sanctity on 7 for us to get there. We just need to have the right draw to combat it. Oh, I really like this hand. But man, if you don't draw a second land, the game's over. I think you got a mulligan this. Even as tempting as that is to keep, I just don't think you can. Well, this is super scary because if they have Leyline here, the game is probably over. Like, we have two lands and we have a playable hand, but like, we're... Yep, and the game is probably over now. We have no way to deal with Leyline of Sanctity. Um, so we're just like Boros charming our stuff. Um, double strike this. 
This isn't even like in modern where I can like double strike a something with like two or three like two prowess triggers on it and get in for a bunch. It has been working fine at a creature meta with this blue white situation. I'm thinking and adding in Sin Collector to the main and some discard. So I think Sin Collector would be really good. Um, another good one would probably be uh, Comball or whatever it was called. Um, the one from the the one from Kaladesh. We're gonna stomp um, the Soul Scar Mage here. And this might get censored, that's fine. But we still take they still take two here. And unfortunately we're just gonna have to play some burn spells against ourselves. We don't really have an option. I'm not giving it the satisfaction of absorbing something that we're casting on ourselves, so All right, I'm just gonna concede here. We have like a, a modern burn hand in our hand and we just, with no lands and like there was no third land and our opponent had a uh, Leyline of Sanctity. So Leyline of Sanctity is backbreaking against burn. Like it's the same thing as it is in modern. Like you're never prepared for it and you can never beat it. Um, and if you are prepared for it, you're doing something wrong, like truthfully, like unless like everybody's just playing it. So it's just one of those hard pills to swallow. Yeah, that li that ley line is backbreaking. Like this hand's really good. I really like this hand. Um, now the question is, they're playing Giganta. Are they playing um, Sack or are they playing Ascendancy or Niv? Um, if they're playing Ascendancy, this hand provides some great options to really try and get under their draw. Definitely playing Ascendancy. Play Soulscar Mage on turn one. And we'll say go. <sighs> Lord. Rip apart, not worth it as a sideboard card. I mean, rip a like if people start going towards this, like enchantment like if they start going towards ley line and other things then it might be worth it like then it might be like it might be worth it to play um to play that over like searing blood or something like that um because that also that also leaves you in a position to um play, having rip apart is also like it's also a good removal spell so it's not really like a burn spell. You're kind of playing more of like a, a mono red, like uh, like a Boros controlling list against other creature decks, which you're kind of doing for the most part anyway. So I actually had somebody disagree with me the other day, um, and it was on one of my YouTube videos. And I'm not saying they're wrong by any means, but I, I was interested to hear. I would like to hear their opinion on it. They haven't responded yet. They were talking about how I play burn too passively, which I think is very interesting because... They're probably the only person I've ever heard say that to me in the history of my life. Um, that I play burn too passively because if they're not, you know, below five going into like the fourth turn, like, you know, like the, the fourth or fifth turn of the game, then you're just actively losing. And I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. So I, I'm really hoping that they respond soon because I'd really like to hear their opinion on why they feel that way. Hmm. That's a lot of considers. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for playing. You are dead. I guess I could have just lit on the Boros Charm and not had to cast another spell, but we're going to send a message. Our blue-white opponents have drawn very well, so we're going to take our our misfortunes out on this poor guy. Or this poor person. Could be a woman. 
Um, Vortex doesn't really do a lot because they're not really in the business of playing spells without paying mana for them. One wear tear inside. Um, I mean, you could play one wear tear in the side. So, it, why one? Like, if you're gonna play, if you're gonna play wear tear as a card to help deal with things, um, what what do, like playing a one of is pretty interesting. And and again, I'm not saying playing one's wrong, but I don't know that playing one fits the game plan of what you're trying to accomplish because you cannot beat Leyline of Sanctity. And you put a you you play a one of card in my opinion because you're saying, okay, throughout the majority of the games that I'm playing, I'm okay with seeing this sometimes. And if I'm gonna play something to beat Leyline of Sanctity, I want at least three of it because I want to see it almost every time. Um, if you have different thoughts, I'd love to I'd love to hear why. That's just that's how I feel about the matchup. Um, Bone Crusher Giant seems like the worst card in this matchup. It's very slow. Kuma. Oh, Lord. Kumano might be, might be better. Uh, or might be slower in this matchup. One land and virtually only one one drop. So we're going to have to mulligan this. Well, I like this hand. I'll tell you that. Um... I like having double Curse of Shaken Faith here because if they have one answer, then um, if they have one answer to a Curse of Shaken Faith, then they have to have a second one. The play with fire is good because it turns on the um, lot at the stage. Now we will have to take two off of our own Curse of Shaken Faith, but that's okay. No guts, no glory. I guess if the meta is turning into a less creature one. You can get out two chain and put more interaction. Um, yeah, that's also that's also an option. Um, like I could see that. Like if, if there's not a lot of creature decks going on, then playing a uh... oh, it's just whenever enchanted player casts their second spell. So, does, so curse of shaken faith is completely one sided. It doesn't even hit us. That's awesome. That's even better. Um, but I mean, yeah, like, but I always think that sideboard is so difficult to do it right. Well, I mean, sideboarding, sideboarding is tough, like, because you don't want to play, like, you don't want to have, like, a too niche sideboard. You don't want to, like, have cards that are, like, only good in this matchup. You want to have cards that vary across multiple matchups. So I think that's why uh, Kyle's uh, suggestion, um, like, you guys both suggested rip apart at the same time. I think that's a very good decision. Um, playing, playing Rip Apart is, like, I think that is a, definitely a solid choice. Because it's really good into the five color humans deck, which there is a lot of right now. Um, and it's also very good into, it's very good into Ascendancy. Also, it helps us deal with Ascendancy. And it's very good into, um, probably just the blue-white matchup as a way to deal with Portable Hole, um... Portable Hold, Detention Sphere, if they're playing it, because I feel like you never know. And it's also very good um, for Leyline when you see it. And it's also really good against the the blue, like the uh, Insole Artifact decks, if you happen to play against those. So, uh, so much options for the side is always very easy to talk from here. <laughs> no, I get that. It's, uh, it's kind of like the concept of saying... It's kind of like when people say, why didn't they do this? And it's like, well, it's a lot easier to look from outside the game and say that you should have done this or you should have done that. So, no, I agree. I think that's a, I think that's a, a very fair statement. Um, we'll go play with fire. We'll leave that on top. It plays very well into the lot of the stage here. Um, we'll go ahead and put the Soul Scar Mage into play, and then we have Double Lightning Strike next turn. So let's see. If they don't have a removal spell, that's 11, 8, and 3 more is 5, with Double Curse of Shaken Faith in play. So anytime they play a second spell, they're taking 4, which is awesome.
Is this just guy ascendancy? They could definitely kill us with Curse of Shaken Faith on the field. Like, it's not crazy to think that they could kill us from there. Oh, and you're going to play another spell? I respect it. I don't know if I like... I mean, I like it also, but... Okay, so you're... I feel like playing Treasure Cruise to fuel up here is worth going to 10. Well, that is good, because I feel like Double Lightning Strike is worth putting you to 4. Actually, Boros Charm is just better. So, we will... We'll put you to three. So, basically, you're locked in a spot where you can't play more than one spell in a turn. It might have arguably have been better to hang on to, uh, to the cards. Because if we hold on to our burn spells... If they play a second spell during the turn, then we can kind of just, we can kill them from there. Yeah. My hair still got all my gel in it from today at work, so it's like constantly like, it's sticking to my headset quite a bit. Um, I'm just going to play this and say go. We'll probably just sacrifice the Raminep Ruins here. I don't really feel like walking into a counterspell of some variety. I don't know what their counterspells look like. As far as I know, they play a lot of Mystical Disputes. So if they went for something like that, it's probably actually better to play the Lightning Strike here because we can reasonably play the Lightning Strike and pay for Mystical Dispute. Okay. I mean, if you attack for 8 here, I'm just going to Lightning Strike you. Alright, well, we beat Ascendancy. So whoever played this deck, whoever built the, the burn list that I'm playing right now was obviously ready to play against Ascendancy. Something that might be worth playing now is Scab Clan Berserker. Um, I was actually, somebody was telling me, um, Wesley, one of my buddies that lives in Knoxville, was telling me that uh, off the Kumano trigger, you can actually play um, Scab Clan Berserker. It comes into play as a 3 3 because of the additional counter clause in the second text. And then you actually still, if you attack and hit, it gets another counter because it hasn't seen the renown counter. Um, so that's a that's pretty cool. I thought that play was pretty fun. Like I really like this hand, but we we just don't have a second land, and I just I just don't think we're in the business of keeping second lands right now. If you want, like keeping one landers, that's we literally haven't had a seven without a second land or with a with a, with more than one land. I mean. So I don't like that my only one drop was Kumano. I um, think that's not great for us. Voldaren Epicure, okay. I think playing Soulscar Mage as a 2-3 is pretty awesome here. I wish we had another creature to play. Um, we'll just play this tapped and say go. Man, imagine if they'd have made Soulscar Mages and Swiss Spears as 2-3s for one. That would have been bonkers. What? To target player or planeswalker is put into a graveyard from the battlefield draw card. That's interesting. That's like a it's like a very weird mini version of um I can't remember what the artifact's called in modern. 
that does that. You can either like pay one uh, colorless and cycle it to draw a card, or you can pay one and and uh, sacrifice it to uh, shock something. All right, so we got 11 points in our hand, which means we need to find six more. This feels like the Rakdos mid-range deck, which does not feel like a good matchup for us. Ooh, so this is not, it's Rakdos Sacrifice. I'm just gonna skull crack you in response. All right, so our other copy of Skullcrack is pretty good here. Hmm. Okay. That's fine. I've seen this Rakdos sack list recently. Very interesting list. Too dependent on Devil, maybe, but very nice. No, I mean, that's fair. It's probably a fair assumption of, of what the deck is set up around. A lot of these decks, like, they, they have a lot of, like, synergies, but they have a core card or two that, like, they really play their deck around. So it is very possible that that's the case. Yeah, we'll go to 15. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and skull crack them. We'll see if they do this in response again. They don't. That's actually pretty synergistic right there to get the value out of that like that. Um... They have to pick what they're going to get rid of here. It isn't just free, because it's only during their turn they get to make creatures. So I'm curious to see what they hit here. Alright. So they're just trying to ping me a bunch of times and drain again. I mean, the fact that we stopped one, and now they're just going to get to do that at least two more times. So they're basically at 14. Which means they're really at 6, and us drawing a land did not help us trying to win the game here. I'm just going to scoop him up to that. All right. Um, Chain of the Rocks feels pretty good. Searing Blood feels pretty good. Not a huge fan of Boros Charm in this matchup. Doesn't really feel like it does a lot. Um, Skullcrack could timely be well. Like, in a timely situation, could be pretty good. Uh, let's try it like that. I don't know if this is correct or not, but I think it's... I think it's a fine way to start. Okay, Dad, can I please open a single 7 tonight that just has a second land in it? Like, jeez, this is kind of getting ridiculous. Like, we're basically just throwing away our first hand every single game. I'm going to keep this and put the Kumano back. Like, which I understand doing sometimes, but after a while, it kind of becomes a little frustrating. Like, we're on our fourth match here, and I'd, I'd like to be able to keep a seven at some point throughout this league. If 
All right, we're gonna attack. It's like cast that fatal push. I know you want to, big boy. Which means I'm gonna run out my Eidolon because I waited and made the correct play. We actually got some value out of the Eidolon there. Okay. Well, that's not good for us. Basically turns off my Searing Blood from ever doing anything. We have to really work the game into a timely spot here. What the flying heck? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to discard the Searing Blood because it does nothing. And we'll just say go here. See, Rip Apart would be really good in this matchup too. Like, Rip Apart would be awesome right here. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't think there's any winning this game. I think the mulligan killed us. The fact that our opponent had double removal spell. Yeah, we're gonna skull crack him to ten. We'll cast play with fire, see what we hit here. I mean Swiss Spear is fine, but like it's not good enough right now. Yeah, I'm just gonna concede. This game's not going anywhere. I just feel like our like we're not drawing well at all. Like the like the draws are not good. Like we we've literally not kept a single seven. Like and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we have kept like one seven, but I mean in four matches we've kept most one. We've mulliganed almost all of them, if not all of them. So it's impossible to do well when you're forced to mulligan every game. Like there's just there's no way around it. Alright, well, here's to see if we can finish with a 2 3. Mm, this hand's terrible. This hand's even worse. Alright, thanks a lot, Moto. Jesus Christ. This is ridiculous. Well, that is unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. And against a Llanowar Elves deck, we're probably super toast. At least we drew. At least we drew a lot at the stage. That puts a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for me here. Okay, so we're actually able to kill everything this turn. Well, almost everything. 
Now, problem with this hand is that we only have a Bone Crusher Giant left. Um, so, I mean, if they have really any follow-up, we're kind of in a up a creek here. But Old Growth Trail is probably just good enough to beat us. Maybe we can get a get a good turn here where our opponent attacks, attacks out a little bit and we can just crash back in. Or even if we had a Soul Scar Mage, maybe. Well, we're going to say go here. I'm probably just going to cast a Skull Crack at the end of the turn here. Hold on to the Lightning Strike in case we get into a spot where we can actually do something with it. Is there a last card? Uh, like a Hydra or something? Jeez. Not bad for leftovers. Probably gonna come in for nine here. I'm actually just gonna say go. Interesting. I'd like to know what their rationale is on saying go there. Okay. I mean, the land there sealed the deal. Like we had to draw straight gas, and they had to not, and they had to draw not to very well. So this is one of those weird matchups where it's like, is searing blood good? I think the answer to that question is no. Not everybody agrees with me though. So I think we're just gonna bring in the chain to the rocks. Like the searing bloods are good on turn two on the play against a land war elf. Everything else in their deck is like five fives and seven sevens and like it's just it's it's so hard to beat um to beat this deck. Like this is a really bad matchup. I really don't like this matchup at all. Yeah we're not winning the game with this hand. I think this hand provides a semblance of hope. We're going to play this with Spear here. I do not think it's worth it to hold up the play with fire for a potential elf. Um, I think we're just forced to play the Eidolon and beat whatever they do. All right. Okay. I mean, if he untaps and plays something else, like, he's going to 14 for it, so it's not for nothing. All right, so I think here's where we try to put on the pressure. We're going to at least... Force our opponent to have something here. That's not bad. Chain of the Rocks beats up on that pretty good. Pretty well? Yeah, pretty well. Man, they're taking a lot of damage. Eidolon has been a house this game. Bro. You are a madman. I'm not even going to show you Chain of the Rocks. 
I mean, Chain of the Rocks probably doesn't matter here, but I'm not going to show it to you. Like, it's probably pretty... If I'm playing white like this, it's probably pretty clear that I'm playing it. Um, so now the question we ask ourselves is... Is Searing Blood better than Light Up the, or better than Eidolon on the draw? I think the answer to that's no. I just think Searing Blood is a trap in this matchup. A lot of people don't agree with me on that, but like this hand. This hand is so bad. Man. This sand's not great. Like, play with fire off the top, and we probably have a chance. Now they're probably going to play a three drop, like, or multiple burning tree emissaries here. Okay. Okay, well, the fact that they're serving up one makes me feel a little bit better. Not much, a little bit. A lot of damage to ourselves here, but Okay, you love to see that. Anything to help clear off the uh, total for their devotion is good here. They're taking the time to stop, undo their yield there. Anything you're going to play here feels good for me, basically. Maybe I lied. Okay. Again, this feels pretty good. Okay, well, three to three. They play anything three or less, we got them. They also can just attack us and play nothing. Well, if they play nothing, they're dead. But if they attack us, they idle unlock us. I don't know, this is weird. We're basically idle unlocked anyway. Oh my god, we won that game. Good lord. I, like... Honestly, that's the crazy part. So, like, both the matches we won that game... Well, I'll take that back. That one match, we felt like we were just dominating and in control. That match... 
I never feel like I'm going to win that match, and we ended up getting there. That was that was an interesting one, to say the least. So, I know we had a 2-3 league, and that's not the best showing, but I feel pretty good about this deck. Like, it feels pretty solid, Like if I'm being honest. Like, it, it, you look at the list, and it has a lot of value. We didn't play against Phoenix one time, um, and we didn't play against, um, like, that or the five-color humans deck at all. Like, and those are decks that I think we have a moderately good matchup against. We played blue-white control twice, lost both times in game three. Um, so, I mean, I think it's definitely an option. I think that you're in a safe place to cut the three Searing Bloods and play three Rip Aparts. I think that is a safe change. Adoxy and Kyle both talked about that earlier, and I think that's a really good place to be. Um, it makes a lot of sense to me. So, but other than that, I really like the four Curse of Shaken Faith, and I like the four Vortex. I think you just, you gotta get a, you just gotta, we just had to draw a little bit better, and our opponents need to draw just a little bit worse. Um, and we probably have like a 4-1 league. So, but yeah, this was the new Boros Burn.